This video guide will help you set up your new Cobra. The guide will be broken down into several sections. Parts description, assembling the standard Cobra, mounting alternatives, system startup, setup print parameters, rebuilding the print head, and troubleshooting. Identification of basic parts. The control box contains the computer electronics and input connections for the handheld terminal and the photo sensor. The handheld keypad or input terminal is used to input messages and for setting the date, time, and general print parameters. Once the system is set up, the handheld keypad fits under the control box and can be detached from the control box and stored away from the production area. The photo sensor, or photo eye, sees each container or product as it approaches the inkjet and fires the printhead. The ink supply and the printhead bracketry consist of septum assembly, where the ink cartridge is mounted, and print head swivel bracket where the print head is mounted. The drop on demand print head comes completely assembled. It just has to be mounted to the swivel bracket. The standard vertical post holds the print head, ink supply, and photo sensor, which allows adjustment from conveyor level to 20 inches in height. This is the mounting bracket in which allows the up and down movement and locking of the vertical post. The Cobra comes with a cleaning kit which contains one tube of hand cleaner, a plastic syringe for cleaning the print head, one pint of solvent, and a six ounce squirt bottle for cleaning the print head and array plate. A complete guide to parts and procedures for service and installation of the Codec Cobra. Refer to the numbers at the top left corner. They correspond to the page numbers of your guide. In a typical installation of the Codec Cobra on a conveyor, the control box is bolted to the side of the conveyor. The mounting bracket is also bolted in the same manner. Install a vertical adjustment post into the conveyor bracket. To install the ink septum horizontal bar assembly, remove the print head swivel bracket and slide the end of the horizontal bar through the clamping device on the vertical adjustment post. Then replace the swivel bracket. Install the print head to the print head swivel bracket with the two screws provided. Make certain the print head guard is in place. This guard protects the head from damage in the event of container impact on the production line. Now connect the ink line to the bottom of the pierce bar located underneath the ink septum. If it is too long or too short, the free flow of ink will be affected. Connect the other end to the print head input tube. Plug in the print head cable attached to the control box. The connector is D-shaped and can only be plugged in one way. Install the photo sensor into the vertical post upstream from the flow of containers. The product will go by the photo eye and then the print head. The photo eye has a four prong cannon plug which plugs into the bottom of the control box and should be finger tight when finished. There are three alternatives to the standard mounting of the inkjet. The first is with the quick change mounting bracket set. This special double set of hardware consists of two vertical mounting posts, a special control box post mount, and two quick-release fixtures. 
This fixture is used when the Cobra is to be frequently moved between two conveyor locations. The second alternative is the Kodak floor stand. This setup has a control box and vertical adjustment bar mounted on a post, which is then bolted to the floor. This setup is used to isolate the inkjet system when there is excessive conveyor vibration on the system. Finally, the Cobra can also be applied to bottom coating by utilizing the Kodak Model 2000 transport. In this configuration, the print head and ink supply are mounted together on a horizontal bar. The entire assembly can then be easily mounted inside the transport. The print head is positioned facing up and prints onto the bottom of the product through a small opening. System Startup Plug in the control box power cord into a clean, isolated power line. The main switch and indicator light are located on the left side of the control box. When the switch is turned on, the red indicator light is lit, and the handheld terminal will display the print message screen. Adjust the height of the print head by placing a sample container in front of the print head on the conveyor. Determine where the code is to be placed by adjusting the vertical adjustment bar. Position the print head within one-eighth of an inch from the product by moving the horizontal adjustment bar. To properly set up the sensor, position the photo eye sensor approximately five-eighths of an inch from the container. When the distance from the photo sensor is correct, a focused red dot can be seen on your container. If you are too close or too far from the container, the dot will blur. Remove the ink bag cover and place the ink cartridge onto the pierce barb. This is done by grasping it by the bottom of the disc and pressing it onto the pierce barb, twisting it to make sure it is seated. The rubber grommet prevents leakage when the ink bag is removed from the barb. Replace the cover and engage the cam lock device. Use the small thumb screw to hold the cover down. Release the ink line clip. Then prime the ink line and print head with a good solid push of the plunger. Dab off the excess ink in front of the array plate. Setting the ink level. Loosening the knob in the back of the septum plate to raise and lower the ink container. Observe the array plate. Notice that as the ink cartridge is moved up, ink will begin to flow from the array plate. Wipe away the excess ink and lower the ink 1 16th of an inch. Check to see if the ink continues to run. Repeat this procedure until the ink no longer runs from the array plate. Purge function fires all nine dots of the print head producing a printed stripe. Move a piece of paper in front of the print head and press the purge button on the handheld. Move the card relatively fast across the face of the print head. If one or more of the nine dots are missing, there will be a white line in the purge stripe that prints on the card. If this is the case, we prime the head and try again. You must have all nine dots firing to get a clear code. When a product or container is moved in front of the photo sensor, a small red light on the back of the sensor should light indicating that it can see the product. If the light does not come on, try repositioning the sensor. Set up print parameters. To enter a message from the main menu, Press key 1 and then press the enter key. Enter an alphanumeric code press the space key and then hold the shift key and press T. This will result in a lowercase t in the message screen. T will print the time of day. Press the enter key and the system will prompt you for the size of the time code. Choose either 9 by 7 dot 
or 7 by 5 dot and then press the enter key. To change character width, press the menu key and select delay set key 2. Press key number 1 for character width and then enter your character width. Then press the enter key. To change space width, press key 3 for space width. Then enter your space width, then press the enter key. Press key 4 to return to the main menu. Rebuilding the printhead. Occasionally it is necessary to rebuild the codec printhead. An exploded view of this assembly can be found on page 13 of the codec service manual. Clean the exterior of the head with a small brush and solvent. Remove the print head guard. Unclip the retainer spring and remove it with the hanger mount. Remove the array plate. Note, the array plate has two alignment holes and related registration pins on the base of the print head. The square hole is always aligned to the pin closest to the bottom of the print head. Remove the array plate o-ring, normally found recessed in a channel in the front of the print head. From the back side of the print head assembly, remove the four screws from the back plate. Remove the clamp plate. Next, remove the two side screws holding the print cable socket. Remove the entire nozzle section from the back plate. From the back side of the nozzle assembly, remove the manifold plate. Remove the rubber membrane and the rubber seal. Remove the ink manifold, then the manifold o-ring, the screen plate, and finally the filter screen. The print head assembly is now completely disassembled. Wash and rinse the rubber seals and o-rings in solvent and set them aside. The remaining parts can be soaked in solvent in an ultrasonic tank for 10 to 20 minutes. After cleaning, inspect the parts for wear or damage, especially the rubber components and the filter screen. To rebuild the print head, start with the manifold alignment pins facing down. Place the clear membrane part of the manifold into the manifold pocket. Next, place on top a clear membrane the second part of the manifold seal. It is important that it is oriented in the recessed area correctly. Align the row of four holes with the channel that runs the length of the cavity. Next, place the manifold plate onto the ink manifold and with the manifold plate facing down set the entire assembly onto the back plate. Install a manifold o-ring making sure it is completely seated in the channel. Place the screen plate onto the ink manifold. the filter screen on top of the screen plate. Guided by the manifold alignment pins, 
install the nozzle section onto the printhead. Fit the clamp plate onto the front of the nozzle section and loosely replace the four bolts through the back plate into the clamping plate. Replace the two side screws that hold the print cable socket. Then tighten the four bolts on the backing plate in a cross pattern. At this point in the reassembly process, check to see if the seals and O-rings do not leak under pressure. Attach a syringe filled with solvent to the ink line input tube. Place your finger firmly over the front nozzle section and apply pressure with the syringe. A correctly assembled printhead will not show leakage around the perimeter of the manifold. Replace the hanger mounting bracket, then clip the spring arms into place. Install the array plate o-ring, making sure it is seated in the groove. Install the array plate. The square hole should be oriented to the bottom of the printhead Secure the spring arms over the array plate. Reattach the syringe and run solvent through the printhead. This should produce nine distinct individual streams shooting from the array plate. Troubleshooting. The troubleshooting guide will try to demonstrate some of the most common causes of poor quality printing and how to prevent them from happening. The most common causes of poor print quality or fuzzy characters is a dirty or worn array plate. Over time ink can build up around the small holes in the array plate. If this occurs, it is best to remove the array plate and thoroughly clean it by soaking it in a container of Kodak solvent and then wiping it with a paper towel. If the problem persists, the array plate should be replaced. Improper cartridge level is a major culprit for causing improper printing quality. Because this system is a gravity-fed system, it is very important to have the ink septum set at a proper level. A septum that is too low will cause a starving effect, and a septum that is too high will cause flooding at the array plate. The flooding will not allow the ink dots to be shot through the array plate and onto the container to be coated. The final area to watch out for is physical contact with the printhead and the ink supply line. If either of these items are severely bumped or jarred during production run, it will cause a blurry or partial code. If this should happen, the best way to correct the problem is a quick push on the cartridge plunger and wipe the array plate clean. This completes your Codec Cobra video manual. If you have any further questions, review the Codec service manual. Additionally, you can contact us at our toll-free number listed on the screen. Thank you.